What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Portigo and Lens Rentals. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about some of the tips and gear to get started with live streaming. With the current situation happening all around the globe, people are being told to separate and isolate themselves during a time when we are the most connected we've ever been. Gatherings and events have been canceled or postponed and every single industry has been impacted, some worse than others. But we also live in an incredible time where this technology allows us to stay connected with each other in real time through the internet. It doesn't matter if you're looking to connect with your family, coworkers, or customers. I'm going to show you all the tools that you need to get started with live streaming. Now I've broken this video up into three sections and I'll take you from the cheapest option of just using your phone and some of the tips to make that the best it can be on a budget to hosting a complete live event performance or presentation. So let's get started. Your smartphone is a great option for going live. It's super easy to use and it gives you a little bit more of that raw feel rather than feeling too overproduced. It allows you to go live directly to some of the major platforms like YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch, as well as some of the ones that you can only do using a phone like Instagram and TikTok. Now being all self-contained in your phone, you can pretty much go live whenever and wherever you want to. But there are a few things that can up the level and make it look a little bit more professional. The two things you want to focus on are lighting and audio. The most important of the two is audio. If your stream has bad audio, it's going to be really hard for your viewers to follow along. That being said, it is possible to use your camera's built-in microphone like I'm using right now, but you'll be better off using a dedicated mic like the Rode SmartLav Plus. This plugs right into the 8th inch port on your phone, and if you don't have an 8th inch port, you can use the lightning adapter. This small mic is going to isolate your voice away from the background and give you a much cleaner sounding audio. This is gonna be an essential deciding factor whether people are gonna stick around for your live stream or if they're gonna go on to the next thing. Next, make sure that you're in the best light. Use window light if you have it available, and if you don't, try to avoid direct light. So look for things that have shades on it or that are diffused or bouncing off a wall. That's gonna give you a softer shadow on your face, which is gonna be more flattering for whoever's on camera. Also, making sure that you have enough light like this is gonna reduce the noise, the graininess you sometimes see in videos. The next step up, if you need to have something that's a little more produced or professional looking, would be to use a DSLR or mirrorless camera. Basically, anything that has an HDMI signal out that you can use as a webcam. I'm using the Sony a7 III. You're also gonna need a couple other things to be able to live stream from this DSLR or mirrorless camera. The first one is some sort of capture card. Now I really like the Elgato CamLink 4K. This basically takes the HDMI signal from your camera and turns it into a USB signal that your computer can read. Basically turning your really expensive DSLR or mirrorless camera into a webcam, but at a much higher quality like what you're seeing right now. Now talking more about some of the basic things that we covered in the phone setup, you wanna make sure that you have really good quality light and audio. Now window light is great and it's free, which is awesome, but sometimes you can't control what the window light is doing. The sun could go behind a cloud, or if you're shooting later at night, the sun could have set, and you're not gonna have any sort of ambient light in your room. So setting up your own lights is a great way to have a consistent look that you can come back to over and over again. And it's not gonna change or fluctuate throughout your live stream. Now there's a ton of lighting options out there, but there's really only two styles that I would look at for this type of setup where we're shooting at a desk or in a smaller area. The first one is an LED tube. Something like the Quasar Science LED tubes are a great option because they're small, they have a really nice form factor, and they have a great quality of light. The other one would be a small LED panel like a Westcott Flex light. Both of these options have a really small form factor and you can fit them basically anywhere that you need to. And it's gonna give you that larger source and soft and more flattering light like I mentioned before. The next thing is your audio. Now these lavaliers are great, but if you wanna step it up again and isolate your voice even more from everything else that's going on around you, you're gonna to wanna to look at getting a podcasting or a condenser type microphone like this one. Now you're gonna be able to run this alongside your camera and have an extremely professional looking live stream. There's a couple different options out there for these different microphones. The first one's gonna be a USB mic, so it's basically gonna plug directly into your computer and your computer will just read it as a USB microphone. The other option is to use an XLR microphone like I have here and run it through an audio interface. So you're gonna have a little more control of what the power is going to the microphone and the signal coming into your computer. And that interface is gonna convert the XLR from the microphone into a USB, just like we did with the HDMI for the camera. The mic and audio interface setup that I'm using is the Rode NT1 Condenser XLR microphone, and that's gonna go into the Focusrite Scarlett Solo XLR audio interface, so it's gonna take the XLR signal in and send it USB out to my computer. And this setup has worked great for me from podcasting, live streaming, as well as doing all my voiceovers. 
Now the last part that you're gonna to need to kind of tie all of these different elements together is some sort of software that you can actually run all this information through and that will send the stream out to either Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, basically wherever you wanna send the stream to. And the software I recommend for this is the OBS or Open Broadcaster Software. It's a free platform that you can download and there's a ton of online education and tutorials about it so you can get up and running super fast. And I really think that this is gonna be the sweet spot for most people who are trying to get into live streaming right now, who just have a message that they wanna get out there and interact a little more with their community. For this last sort of level or tier, we're gonna head back down into the studio because this one gets a little bit more advanced. Now, before I get into this last tier or level, I just wanna let you guys know about a couple of camera packages that we've been putting together to help you get started with live streaming quicker. Now, if all of this that I've kind of been going over is a little overwhelming, we put together a couple packages with cameras, mics, as well as a Blackmagic switcher. So you can basically just plug it into your computer and then start streaming directly to any platform that you want to, like YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, without having to go through and learn another software like OBS. So if you wanna check those out, those are gonna be linked to in the description down below. But let's keep this moving and talk about some of these more advanced live stream setups. Now these are really for people who are trying to do multi-camera live events, where you have a bunch of people that you're trying to record at the same time and switch between them, or if you're trying to cut in a lot of graphics, and you basically need a team that can help run the live stream for you. Obviously, some of these things still apply, like having great lighting and having great sounding audio. The big thing that's gonna change is the software and hardware that you're gonna be using to actually send out the stream, switch cameras or feeds if you're trying to play media during the stream as well, as well as what kind of effects, lower thirds, sound effects, music, things like that that you're gonna be switching to live. Having multiple cameras to switch to allows you to go in for a close-up or an overhead shot of what you're working on or bounce to another person during the live stream. Equipment wise, some of the options that are gonna allow you to do this multicam live stream would be the NewTek TriCaster as well as the Livestream Studio HD 550 and the Blackmagic Design Studio Switcher. We even have options for streaming over cellular service if you're not gonna be near an internet connection. There are some more out there as well, but these are just the ones that I know of and have personally used. Getting all of these up and running, it does take a little bit of knowledge in live stream and in the software that you're using. So I don't wanna to dive too deep into these in this video, but if you're interested in getting something like that, we can definitely help you figure out exactly what you're gonna need and what's gonna be best for the setup that you're trying to do. Hopefully this video was helpful, and if you have any questions about getting a live stream set up for any reason, if you just have an announcement, a product launch, a presentation, whatever it might be, we can help you get set up with the right gear for you. So feel free to reach out to support at lensprotogo.com, and as well as all the things that I've mentioned in this video on starting a live stream, those are going to be linked to in the description down below. So I hope you guys are staying safe and doing what you can to help those who need it. Feel free to ask questions in the comments as well, and I'll see you in the next one.